Wow, what's this thing called? That's what I'm going to tell you about in this video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. This is a cool rocket kit called the Healy Rock. Uh, this rocket I designed a million years ago. Let me let me give you a little background on it. Um, it's a rotor rock style helicopter. Now I didn't invent the rotor rock. Um, I was first introduced to it when I was in college in around 1984. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Pat McCarthy, who still lives down in Florida. Um, he showed me a, his rotor rock and he let me borrow it and I, and I um, drew up these plans for it and I copied everything because it was such a fascinating rocket to me. Um, so these, these pieces of paper are well, you know, over 30 years old uh, because they're so cool. Um, the kit itself uh, goes back to 1996 um, and I had to dig this out. So this was the 1996 Apogee catalog. And here on page two, page two <laughs> is the Rotorock, or the Hellerock. Sorry, I gave it the name Hellerock because Rotorock was already taken. Now, this is a competition style helicopter, uh, which means um, its purpose is to hang in the air as long as possible. Now, this was the first one that Apogee did. Uh, we have since come out with a variety of other competition style Hellerox. Uh, this is the mini copter and it has internal rotor blades that are carried inside the rocket and if I was to fly in competition I would probably use the mini rock but the Hellerock it's still such a cool kit we still sell a lot of them. Um, the difference between now and when it was first released in 1996 is we added the decals. Pretty much everything else stayed the same uh, but we are making some minor changes in the future. Um, the kit originally came with die-cut balsa. And I don't know if you can see these, but these are die-cut, uh, which means it's kind of like a cookie cutter, stamped them out of the wood. Uh, we'll be eventually switching them over to laser cut uh, because the dies wear out, um, and then laser cut gives you a nice clean edge, and every one of them is identical. Uh, so that's we're going to laser cut and uh, in the future we're also going to change the nose cone a little bit to make it easier to make. It doesn't uh, change the kit at all but for us um, we want to keep the prices down as much as possible and keep them stable for long periods of time so that's why uh, we're going to change the nose cone. Um, if we start changing too much then we got to change the instructions and that's kind of Nobody wants to go back and revisit the old instructions. So I'm going to go and start building this rocket because um, I think you're going to like it. So first I want to go over some of the parts in the rocket kit. There's a lot of little tiny parts and they're easy to get lost so I want to point them out. First is the rubber bands. Uh, they're just ordinary, uh, I think they're number eight size. Um, they're, they're kind of small. Uh, then you have this piece of string. Don't lose that string. We're going to use that string later. Uh, what it's used for is to wrap around the hinges. Um, and these are the hinges. These are nylon hinges. And they, call, they come from a company called Dubro. Um, they're easy to get lost because they blend in with the paper inside the packaging. Um, we, do we do sell them separately. Um, you'll need three of these in case you lose any or and they're, they are easy to ruin. This is a skill level four kit, so which means that it's a slightly challenging. And the challenging part is these, these little hinges. Um, if you get glue into the hinge pin, it's better just to uh, get some new ones. They're, they're very difficult to salvage. There's going to be three launch lugs, an engine block, the nose cone, which I showed you before, and then there's this little piece of music wire. And the music wire, we, we're going to make little hooks. And the hooks are on the outside of the blades right here. And we're going to form those with a pair of pliers and some diagonal cutters. So don't lose that. That's also easy to get lost. And then, of course, you have your tube and your balsa fins. And as I said, it now comes with decals. Okay, so the first step is to um, sand the balsa fins. 
So I leave the fins in the in the wood, and I'll just gently sand them. Uh, basically, we want to just smooth them up a little bit. And you want to do the same thing with the uh, the blades. These are the rotor blades. And I take, uh, this is like 220 grit sandpaper, and I got it on a sanding block. Okay, next we want to uh, remove them from the balsa sheet. And I gently bend the balsa back just a little bit to see where the, the score line is. And then you want to take your hobby knife. Oops, sometimes they will pop out easy. Typically it's along the the edges that goes against the grain. That sometimes there's a there's a heavy piece of balsa that doesn't want to cut. Um, so you do have to cut the edges. Okay, so there's two blades. And the third blade right there. This is all scrap, so you can get rid of that. Um, so I got a little bit of uh, extra balsa hanging off the edge, so we'll stack sand them to make sure they're all the same size. So when I hold them, I hold them really tight like that. And then uh, I hold the uh, hold the balsa or the, the sanding block and kind of sand in a circular motion. Okay, and then you're going to do, want to do the same thing for the fins, and there's also some other little pieces in here. Um, sometimes they do pop out. These are the, the reinforcement strips that go here at the top of the rocket around, the, the, around these cutouts. Once you start cutting cutouts in the tube, it weakens it, so we put these reinforcements to make sure that, um, that the tube stays rigid. When I used to live in Florida, um, the humidity there was so great that it would soak into the paper, make it soft and spongy. Um, and then there's a rubber band that goes from the nose cone to the little hook that I was talking about. And that basically is pulling real tight, so it's trying to compress the tube. And because it was so humid and the tube was kind of soggy, it would deform the tube and ruin the rocket. So that's why these are important um, to put onto your rocket. Got two fins that popped out. Third one, there it is. And then we have these the dihedral standoffs. A little harder to see. There's three of those. you'll need from the balsa wood. And again, as before, as we did with the blades, you want to stack them all the like pieces together and sand them, particularly those edges. Make sure they're all nice and uniform.
there's a little flat part on this edge. So go ahead and flatten that out again. Just like that. Just right there. Okay, so I'm going to finish sanding these. And in our next video, we'll continue with the construction of the Gila Rock. Um, so while you're doing that, um, you wanna, might want to check out the videos on sealing balsa wood fins. Because we have some of those and they're going to be listed here on the side with our other videos that I think you'll enjoy.